Hi, I'm Jack Barry. Over the years, I've created, produced, and sometimes emceed a great many game and panel shows. Juvenile Jury, Life Begins at 80, Concentration, which incidentally is still running on NBC after 11 years, 21, Tic-Tac-Toe, and many others. None of these shows makes me any prouder than I am of the one which I have just produced for Metromedia, television's first 90-minute game show. I am so proud of it, in fact, that I do not want to show you the first of the three different games that are played on the show. Why? Well, the second and third games are absolutely superb. By comparison, we found the first game to be relatively weak. So we've decided that if and when we go into production of the series, we should eliminate that first game from our format and add a few minutes to the second and third strong games, plus some lengthier interviews with the contestants for better identification with them for the home audience. And when you see these attractive young couples, I think you'll see why the home viewers would enjoy getting better acquainted with them. So now, we'd like you to see our pilot, remembering that in this version, we have simply cut from the opening of the show right into the start of game number two. I think you'll agree, after seeing games two and three, bearing in mind the additions I've mentioned, that we really have a chance to sock it to them with this new and exciting entertainment form. Thank you. These six engaged couples will be battling it out in contests of knowledge and skill, and the winning couple will receive cash, prizes, and a surprise honeymoon, all on The Honeymoon Game. And now, meet the host of our show, Jim McCrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to the Honeymoon Game. We'll be playing several different games on this show, and I'll describe each of them before we play. Now, one of our games will bring to our stage, live and in living color, five of your favorite celebrities. As you know, six couples will be playing in these contests, but only one of them will emerge victorious. To play our first game, we've asked three of our six couples to be seated here on stage. Now, only two of these couples will continue to the semifinals. One couple will be eliminated, and the same is true of the other three couples who will be awaiting their turn backstage. We'll find out something about our players, but before we do, this important message. <laughs> Seated here on stage are two of our winning couples. The other two winning couples are awaiting their turn backstage. And with the help of five of your favorite celebrities, our winning teams will battle it out in an exciting game of skill and knowledge. But when this round is over, only two teams will be left to compete in the finals. A game in which our players are about to compete is one involving their abilities to answer questions in the area of general knowledge. And they will be getting their questions directly from our celebrities who will be representing individual categories. Now, let's introduce our celebrities now. First, representing the field of showbiz. Here's the performer who's done it all. This jockey, musician, great drummer, actor, and now the star of Hogan's Heroes. Let's welcome Bob Crane. <laughs> sir, how are you? Nice to have you here. Nice to meet you, sir. Sir Hogan. Here's a lovely lady of song representing the category of music, my favorite girl singer, Miss J.P. Morgan. <laughs> J.P. Now, we're privileged to have the in the category of politics represented by a man who really knows. The former governor of California, ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Honorable Edmund G. Brown. Thank you, Eddie, Thank you. Here's one of baseball's legendary figures, now an excellent broadcaster. Welcome my good friend, Mr. Don Drysdale. Here's one of the stars of the very popular Julia show, Mark Kapage. Mark? How you doing, son? Get up on your tall feet there, Mark. 
Mark, I've been wanting to ask you since I knew that you were going to be on our program. Is that lovely lady who plays your mother on television, Diane Carroll, is she as pretty as she off screen as she is on screen? She sure is. She's mm. even prettier than she is on screen. Good. What about Earl J. Wagondorn? Is he a nice guy? You guys seem to be great pals. No, he's not so good. <laughs> best friend. All right, thank you, Mark. Don, nice to have you with us. Thank you. You've now given up playing baseball and you're broadcasting it. Do you miss being on the field? Well, I don't miss it that much uh, because I'm around it up there in the booth so I can sit and second guess like we were second guessing we were playing. Great. <laughs> All dressed up there, Don. Uh, is this what you usually wear to a show? No, I have to go to a charity ball tonight. Good, After good the luck. Show. Hope you have a good time. Thank you. Governor Brown, welcome, sir. Nice to have you with us. Very happy to be here. Got a question for you, Governor. Are you going to get back into politics? I don't think so, but you never can tell. <laughs> That's a political answer. We hope so, sir. Another question, Governor. You're now in... Nixon was defeated, too, so... And he did fairly well. <laughs> Great. Governor, you're now in a very successful practice of law. Which did you enjoy more, politics or your law practice now? Well, I enjoy them both, but I think uh, being in government is probably, outside of the clergy, the highest profession of them all. Great. Nice to have you, sir. Governor Brown. Now, do I call you Jay or JP? Miss Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. Uh, JP, you've been having kind of a running feud with a man who does a late-night talk show, Johnny Carson. Is that all sincere? It's not a feud. I love Johnny, you and do. we've been friends a long time. Great. I, I like him. You do like him? Very much. Why do you fuss at him a lot? Because I'm like that. You are. <laughs> I'll start with you in a minute. <laughs> okay, JP. Colonel Hogan, how are you, sir? Fine, thank you, Jim. Uh, Bob, I know that you've done quite a few pictures and, and of course, a long-running television show. Which do you prefer, television or motion pictures? Oh, I just enjoy performing. That's why I'm here tonight, anxiously looking forward to the game. Great, we are too, and thank you so much for being with us. Let's have a big round for our visiting celebrity. All right. Couples, welcome to our semifinals. Welcome to our semifinals. Okay, players, now here's how the game works. In front of you, you will see levers. Now, when you pull them, they activate the spinning wheels over here. And where the wheels stop, nobody knows. But when they do stop, pictures of our celebrities will be in the windows. Now, you can choose to answer a question from any of those celebrities. You'll get one point for each correct answer. However, if the celebrity you pick appears in two of the windows, you'll get two points. And if the celebrity you pick appears in all three windows, you'll get three points. Now, ten points wins the game. Whenever the word bonus appears, you'll get one free point. And if at any time during the game, the word bonus appears in all three windows, then you're the winner of the semifinal right then and there. Okay? You understand? <laughs> all right. We'll give you a chance to play our game right after these important messages. <laughs> Welcome back to the semifinals of the honeymoon game. Couple number one and couple number two. Anita and Rod will give you the opportunity to spin the wheel first. Will you spin it there, Rod? Round and round our wheel goes. Where they stop? Baseball, showbiz, and politics. So you have a choice for one point. Who do you choose? Politics. You'll choose politics. Governor Brown, would you ask a one-point question, please, sir? There's a saying you can't win them all. I lost a big one, and I won a big one. Tell me, what man did I beat, and what man beat me? <laughs> Sorry, I have to call for your answer. Okay, uh, you, you lost to Governor Reagan, and uh, who did he beat? I always thought if he was governor, unfortunately, I can't think of who it was you beat. have to ask you to hurry. Sorry, time's up. That's the wrong point. It was Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. <laughs> Richard Nixon. <laughs> Team number two, spin the wheel, please. <laughs> Team number two, spin the wheels. Your categories are baseball, showbiz, and baseball. You can get a two-point question from Don Drysdale or a one-point question from the Colonel. Showbiz. Showbiz. All right. Bob, would you ask a one-point question, please? Yeah, on Hogan's Heroes, when Schultz gets a haircut, the barber charges him $4. It's a dollar for each side. <laughs> Can you tell me Schultz's rank? Is Schultz a sergeant, a captain, or a corporal? 
Uh, uh, Sergeant Schultz. Good watchers. Yeah, sounds good. That, right, I'm, I'm... Sergeant Schultz. Aha! Correct. Right for one point. So at the end of this round, score is one to nothing. Anita and Rod, spin the wheel, please. Here it goes. A bonus. Baseball and baseball. So you add to your score in one point with a bonus, and you get a two-point question from Don Drysdale. Pitch him one, Don. All right. When I was uh, going for the scoreless innings record, well, the pressure was really on me, but I finally made it. And which of these figures is the one that did it? Was it 38 scoreless innings, 58 scoreless innings, or 68 scoreless innings? 38. No, it was 58. I was there. I was there. 58. I'm sorry, we don't deduct from you. Go ahead, Judy and Felix. Spin the wheel. Here we go. Kid stuff, music, and music. A two-point question from J.P. Morgan or kid stuff for one? We'll go for the music. You'll go for music. J.P., would you ask? Ethel Mervyn brought down the house on opening night when she sang, There's no business like show business. Not exactly that way. <laughs> What Broadway show is it from? Call me Madam, Annie, Get Your Gun, or Gypsy? It's not Gypsy. It's Annie, Get Your Gun. There's no business like show business. I think it's Annie, Get Your Gun. Right! Right. For oh. one point. Two points. That's right. Point. The score is now three to one. Judy and Felix have three, and Nita and Rod have one. Spin the wheel, please. Here we go. Baseball, politics, and baseball. Two-point question from Don Drysdale or one point from the governor? Politics. Politics for one point. Governor Brown, if you please. Prior to becoming governor of the state, I held another office. Can you tell me what office that was? Uh, Lieutenant Governor? Attorney General. Attorney General, I'm sorry. So we don't deduct anything from you. Judy and Felix, spin the wheel, please. Okay. Kid stuff, showbiz, and a bonus. So you add to your score. You have a bonus, which brings your total to four. You want a one-point question from Mark or from Bob Crane? From Bob, please. From Bob Crane. A one-point question, Colonel. A fine actor who has probably played more German officers than any actor I know portrays the frustrated Colonel Klink in our series, Hogan's Heroes. Can you tell me that actor's name? Colonel Klink's actor's yeah. name, the actor that played it. Is it Werner Klemperer? Werner Klemperer is right. Right, for one point. So at the end of this round, the score is five to one. Anita and Rod, spin the wheel, please. Politics, kid stuff, and politics. All right, you can have a two-point question on politics from the governor, or kid stuff for one. We'll try them one more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for two points, Governor, would you ask a question, please? <laughs> Does the governor have the privilege of sending his mail without paying for stamps? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Yeah. What, was the, what was the... They said yes. No. No. Only members of Congress, the President, the Vice President, and widows of Presidents are allowed this. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Judy and Felix. Kid stuff, a bonus, and music. So your bonus adds to your score. You now have six. You want a one-point question from Mark Apage or J.P. Morgan? Uh, J.P., please. J.P. on music, a, please. A prolific young uh, man, Mac Davis, wrote this song. Dun, 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 and it don't rain in Indianapolis. What's the correct uh, title of the song? If that's not loving me. No. Mm. No. Little green apples. Little green apples. I'm sorry, I have to accept that answer? Yes. It's wrong. That's wrong. The sign, song title is Little Green Apples. Okay, I it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the score at the end of this round, Judy and Felix, six, Anita and Rod, one. You're five behind, spin the wheel. Showbiz and baseball for one point. Showbiz. Showbiz. Showbiz for one point. Bob? Oh, boy. One of my prison mates on Hogan's Heroes makes me wonder whose side he's really on. He does all the cooking for us. What is the name of the character he plays? Is it La Blow, La Beau, or La Blank? <laughs> La Blank. La Blank 
<laughs> no, it's Robert Clary, and he plays LeBeau. And that was the LeBanc, LeBlanc answer. I'm <laughs> yes. sorry. Go on to Judy and Felix. Spin the wheel, please. Baseball, music, and baseball. Two points from Don Drysdale and one from J.P. Morgan. Music, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> music, okay. J.P.? One of the uh, big hit songs from the film Easy Rider was called The Pusher Man. Which rock group recorded this song? Was it Creedence Clearwater, Cold Blood, or Steppenwolf? I think Creedence Take it, Judy. I think Clearance, Cle yes, I, uh, I just blew it, no. <laughs> I thought it was Cle I can't say it. Cle Creedence you thought Cle it was Creedence Clearwater. It's Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf, I'm sorry. So at the end of this round, the score is six to one. Anita and Rod, spin the wheel, please. There's one point you didn't have to ask for. That brings you up to two. You get a two-point question from J.P. Morgan. J.P.? Oh, me? <laughs> Again? Uh, this song is considered the greatest seller of, all, of them all. Um, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Uh, who wrote it? Irving Berlin. Right. Right for two points. Right for two points. Judy and Felix, spin the wheel, please. Showbiz music and showbiz. Two-point question from Bob Crane or one from J.P. Morgan? Showbiz, please. Showbiz for two points, Bob. I tried to call my friend Don Adams the other day, but I couldn't reach him. He has an unlisted shoe. <laughs> Written right here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make them up, folks. I wanted to ask Don Adams the name of the actor who portrayed the chief in the Get Smart series. Is that actor's name Ed Plant, Ed Platt, or Ed McDonald? Ed Platt. Ed Platt is right, covered. Two points. <laughs> Judy and Felix have eight points. Anita and Rod have four. Spin the wheel, Anita and Rod. Politics and showbiz for two points. Showbiz. Bob Crane, another question for you for two points, please. <laughs> Golly. Richard Burton should make the list of the ten best dressed men. After all, he has his own tailor around the house. <laughs> Dick and Liz made a picture together. It's an eight by ten. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, they did make a motion picture in which he played a clergyman. Was that picture the Sandpiper or the Knight of the Iguana? He played a clergyman. Was it the Sandpiper or the Knight of the Iguana? Richard Burton. <laughs> Sorry, I have to ask for your answer. Sandpiper. Sandpiper is correct. The Sandpiper. Yes. Correct. For two points. Judy and Felix spin the wheel. Thank you. Music, baseball, and baseball. Two-point question, which you have eight. And if you get ten in this round, you will be the winner of our semifinal. No way. You can play safe and go with J.P. 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 Morgan for one point. There's a marvelous song of Burt Bacharach's. What the world needs now. Uh, what does the song say the world needs? Love, sweet love. Right. Right for one point. Gives you nine. One point away from ten and a win. Anita and Rod, you're behind. You have six. Can you spin the wheel, please? Showbiz, politics, and baseball for one point. Showbiz? Showbiz. Showbiz. Bob? One of my hobbies is playing the drums. When at the age of ten, my father gave me a drum and told me to beat it. <laughs> play clubs with this act. <laughs> I've always admired the artistry of Benny Goodman's ace drummer of the 30s. Another favorite of ours, what's that drummer's name? Played with Benny Goodman in the 30s and 40s, too, for them. Uh, just for what's the drummer's name? Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich, no, Gene Krupa. Gene Krupa, I'm sorry. All right, Judy and Felix, you have nine points. You could go over the mark and win if a bonus comes up. Or if you get a one-point question and you answer correctly, you'll go into the finals of the honeymoon game. So good luck and spin the wheel. Kid stuff, showbiz, and a bonus. Dan, you're our winner. The winner of our silly fight. We'll be right back before the honeymoon game, right after this important message.
Welcome back to the honeymoon game. And here are our other two winning couples, Rebecca and Charles and Denise and Jim. Say hello to our celebrities over there. Hello. Hello, celebrities. Say hello, hello. to our friends. Hello. hello. All right, we'll start playing. You know how to play the game, so we'll start with couple number one. Rebecca and Charles, spin the wheel, please. Politics, music, and politics. You want a two-point question from the governor or one on music? I think we'll take the music. We'll take the music. All right, JP. The musical group, uh, the Mamas and the Papas, broke up some time ago, but one of the group has gone on as a successful single. Which one is it? It's Mama Cass Elliot. Right. Right, for one point. Thank you. Jim and Denise, spin the wheel, please. Kid stuff, politics, and baseball, for one point each. Kid stuff. Kid stuff. Mark Capage. Mark? Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. I did enough of that, Paul. Now you finish it, okay? Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow, beautiful. Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry, John, do I have to call for your answer? Well, we don't know. You don't Sorry. know? It's the little dog laugh to see such a sport and the dish ran away with a spoon. Is that right, Marks? Yes. Thank you. So the score at the end of the first round is zero to one. Rebecca and Charles, spin the wheel, please. Showbiz, kid stuff, and music for one point each. I think with the last poem, we'll try kid stuff. Kid stuff. Mark? Could you give us another question on kid stuff, please? One of my favorite Disney pictures is about Snow White and the seven drawers. I like one of the drawers best because he never talked. What's his name? Oh, I think, I, being a kid myself, uh, his name I is... I hope you know it. <laughs> so do I. I think it was Dopey. Right. All right, for one point. Thank you, Mark. All right, Denise and Jim, spin the wheel. Your category is ours. The wheels go around. Showbiz, baseball, and baseball. You want a two-point question from Don Drysdale or one from Bob Crane? Baseball. Baseball. Two-point question, Don. All right. In the 1963 series, I pitched a shutout against our opponents, and then we went on to win the series. Can you tell me which Ameri American League club did we beat? Was it the Red Sox, the Yankees, or the Minnesota Twins? I don't know. 1963. The Minnesota Twins? No, I'm sorry. It was the New York Yankees. New York Yankees. Thank you. So at the end of this round, the score is zero to two. Rebecca and Charles, spin the wheel, please. Your categories are baseball, baseball, and politics. Two-point question from Don or one from the governor? We'll try baseball. Baseball, Don. All righty. Baseball has its legendary figures, and if you think you know baseball history, well, then you should be able to tell me about what position ex-Yankee great Yogi Berra played. This is funny because I don't know history, but I do know what position he played. Is a catcher? That's right. That's right. Okay. For two points. Two points. Denise and Jim, spin the wheel. Thank you, Don. Denise and Jim. Politics, music, and politics. Two points from the governor or one on music? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, politics. Politics. Governor, two-point question, please, sir. Earl Warren was a Republican governor. And I was a Democratic governor. We all know what Ronald Reagan is. <laughs> Can you tell me which political party Governor Goodwin Knight belonged? Republican. Right. Right, for two points. So at the end of this round, the score is two to four. Rebecca and Charles, spin the wheel, please. Kid stuff, politics and politics. Another two-point question from the governor, one on kid stuff. Okay, we'll try the governor. The governor. Two-point question again, sir. Be nice. <laughs> Which 20th century president was twice governor of New York State? Oh, that's an easy one. Oh? <laughs> Have to ask for your answer. Uh, Roosevelt. Right. 
Franklin Delano Roosevelt is right for two points. All right, you need some jam. You're behind now. Spin the wheel. <laughs> baseball, kid stuff, and baseball. Two points on baseball or one from Mark. Which one was it? Baseball. Okay, an easy one on baseball. Baseball. <laughs> All right, a two-point question from Don Drysdale. All right, what is the maximum number of games that can be played in any given World Series? No coaching from the audience. Seven. Right. Right. Right for two points. So the score at the end of this round is four to six. Rebecca and Charles spin the wheel. Showbiz. Showbiz and baseball. Two-point question from the Colonel or one from Don? Showbiz. Showbiz. Colonel Hogan? Yeah, Burt Lancaster once played the part of a preacher who spoke so convincingly about the evils of liquor that I frankly stopped watching the Dean Martin show. <laughs> Another good one. Another goodie. <laughs> Here's another one you may not like. Bert, Bert won an Academy Award, that's Bert Lancaster, for his performance in that film. What was the name of the picture in which he played the preacher? Oh, really? He won an Academy Award. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wise guy. What's the answer? <laughs> 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 What's the name of the picture? I believe it's Elmer Gantry. Elmer Gantry is correct. Right. Correct. For two points. All right, Denise and Jim, your opponents have eight points. They're two away from the magic number of ten, which would make them win the game. Spin the wheel, please. Round and round our wheels go. Stops on a bonus. Baseball and kid stuff. We add the bonus to your score right now. Gives you five. You want another point from Don Drysdale or from Mark Capage, if you answer correctly. <laughs> uh, baseball. Baseball. Don, one point question, please. All right. One American League team holds the record for 20 victories in a record 29 World Series games. Which team am I talking about? <laughs> New York Yankees. That's right. Right for one point. So at the end of this round, the score is six to eight. Now, Rebecca and Charles, you have eight points. All you need to win is 10. But if you do reach the number 10, your opponents have an opportunity to answer in their proper turn. Of course, if you do get three bonuses on the board, you'll be the winner of the semifinals right then. So good luck to you and spin the wheel. <laughs> Music, showbiz, and showbiz. Two-point question for the 10, or one oh, point from J.P. Morgan? Who the wise guy over there? <laughs> Two points, and the magic number of 10, Bob. Joe Friday is a cop. The little back of bag of goodies he carries around, around with him are cop cakes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the real name of Joe Friday's sidekick on the new Dragnet series? That was a good it's question. It's <laughs> Pick a name, pick a name. Pick a name, any pick a name, any name. <laughs> Sorry, I have to ask Gannon, you. Uh, Gannon, um, His Sergeant. real name. Oh, boy. The actor's real name. I've, I don't know. You got me. Bob? Harry Morgan. Harry, Harry Morgan. Morgan. You're right. All right, Denise and Jim, you stay alive. You have six. You're two behind Rebecca and Charles and four away from the point of ten. So spin the wheel, please. Wheel of Fortune. Politics, music, and baseball for one point. Music. 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 J.P.? Charles Aznavour. Is that right? Yes. Is referred to as the Frank Sinatra of what country? France. Right. Right, for one point. So the score is now seven to eight. Seven to eight. Rebecca and Charles, spin the wheel. You're going for a win. You're going for a win. Kid stuff, music, and a bonus, oh. which gives you nine. So that means that one point question could put you at ten, but again, I remind you, Denise and Jim have a turn in their proper order. So which do you want, kid stuff? Or music? JP. Music. Music, JP. Okay, uh, which other blonde singer wrote this song hit? <laughs> which other blonde singer? Well, that's what it says oh. here. Come on. <laughs> it's a good day for singing along, and it's a good day for singing the song. Blonde singer. Blonde singer. I can think of any popular blonde singer. <laughs> Sorry, I have to ask for your answer. I don't know. You do not know? Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee is correct. You have seven. It's possible now for you to win since this is your proper turn. You can win with a three-point question. You can win with a bonus or two. So good luck to you as you spin the wheel at seven to go to ten. Showbiz, bonus, and music. So the bonus brings you now to eight 
You have a one-point question on showbiz or music. Music. Music for one point, J.P. Uh, this song won the Grammy Award for 1970. Day to day, day to day, 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 day. Tell me what's the name of the song. Games people play. Right, right for one point. For our games in a dead heat, nine to nine. We're back in Charles as you spin the wheel. Good luck, Pete. All right. There's a bonus, brings you to 10, showbiz and baseball. If you ask a question on showbiz or baseball, it could put you at 11 and maybe give you an edge. You already have 10 now. So do you want a one-point question on showbiz or one on baseball? Okay, showbiz. Showbiz, Bob. Here it comes, folks. <laughs> they say that an actor works like a dog. In fact, Kirk Douglas once played the part of a boxer. Oh. Oh. Would you believe police dog? What was the name of the movie in which Kirk Douglas played the part of a boxer? Was it Requiem for a Heavyweight, The Champion, or The Harder They Fall? Kirk Douglas played the part of a boxer in what, what picture? Requiem, okay, for a Requiem for a Heavyweight? The Champion or The Harder They Fall. Which one? Uh, the Harder They Fall. No, wrong. The That's Champion. Sorry. The Champion. You have ten. You could still be our winners. Denise and Jim, you have nine. If you get a bonus, you'll tie, and if you get an extra point, you'll be our winners. So spin the wheel, please. Good stuff. Showbiz and a bonus, which brings you to 10. You need a one-point answer from Kid Stuff or Showbiz to win our game. Uh, showbiz, definitely. Showbiz. Bob, all okay. important question. Clark Gable made so much money as an actor that he bought four cars, one for each direction. <laughs> I'll wait. Can you tell me the name of the character Clark Gable played in Gone with the Wind? <laughs> Red Butler, correct! Red Butler, 11. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Charles, I'm sorry that you didn't win. We have a nice consolation prize for you back stage. We'll see you on the final against Felix and Judy in just a few moments. Bob, thank you so much. You were marvelous. My Enjoyed pleasure. it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, JP, for being with us. You were marvelous. Indeed, an honor, Governor, to have you with us. Mark, see you around, buddy. Enjoyed having you here. Don, good luck with Montreal next year. Thank you. Let's have a big round of applause for all five of our celebrities. Thank you. And boy, we'll see you back on our finals against Judy and Felix in just a few moments. But first, this important message. <laughs> Welcome back to the honeymoon game. The big moment has arrived. Seated here beside me are the two teams who have battled their way to the finals. So one of these teams will soon be declared the winner. Will win cash, prizes, and a surprise honeymoon trip. Now, players, here's how the final game works. You're going to pull those levers in front of you once again. And whatever comes up on our spinning wheels, you'll have to do. By doing, I mean you'll have to answer questions on the various categories and take some risk at your own election. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. We'll keep playing until you hear this buzzer. When that buzzer sounds, we'll play two more complete rounds, and whoever has accumulated the most money, the end of the second round will be the winner of the honeymoon game. All set, teams? Right. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Come a long Thank way. Thank you very much. All right, team number one, pull the lever. Go. There you have it. Your category is sports for $10. Now, $10 is the amount of money that you'll win in sports. If you don't answer correctly, we deduct that amount, but we never deduct below zero. Behind the Take a Chance window is all sorts of bonuses and prizes. A correct answer will enable you to open that Take a Chance window. You could add to your winnings, or you could lose some, or possibly spin again. So good luck for $10 on sports. If you saw the names Intrepid and Gretel listed on your fact sheet covering the event, would you be watching the 1969 Winter Olympics? a bobsled event, or watching the America's Cup Yacht Race. Intrepid and Gretel. Yeah, Intrepid and Gretel. Bobsled. Bobsled. Sorry, it's the America's Cup Yacht Trials. You don't have any money, we don't penalize you for that. Denise and Jim, spin the wheel, please. Your category is the Old West. The Old West for $100. In which western state can you find the famous Dodge City? Kansas. Kansas is correct for $100. $100. A 
All right, you answered correctly. You have one hundred dollars. Now, because you answered correctly, do you want to take a chance? I don't think this time, no. You will not take a chance. All right, the score is one hundred to nothing. Judy and Felix, spin the wheel, please. Where it's at? For one hundred dollars. Where it's at? For one hundred dollars. The Greenwich Meridian is our prime meridian from which we find out where in the world we are. But where is it at? Does it run through Greenwich, Connecticut, Greenwich, England, or Meridian, Mississippi? Greenwich, England. Right, for $100. All right, because you answered correctly. You have $100, and so you want to take a chance. Do we? Take a chance. Mm, yes. You will take a chance. All right, let's look at our take a chance window. Deduct $30. All right, that brings you down to $70. Denise and Jim, with $100, spin the wheel. The Old West for $100. The Old West for $100. Geronimo was the chief of which Indian nation? For $100, was it the Sioux, the Apache, or the Navajo? Geronimo. Apache? Apache is correct for $100. $100. All right, again, because you answered correctly, you have $200. Do so you want to take a chance? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You do not. All right, thank you. Judy and Felix, spin the wheel. Potluck. Potluck is your category for $100. Man's best friend, the dog, is a member of the canine family. What's the name of the cat family? family. The, the feline, feline family. family. Right, for $100. All right, you've answered correctly. You now have $170. Do you want to take a chance? We'll pass this time. We'll pass this time. <laughs> Denise and Jen, spin the wheel, please. Your category is fact or fiction. Fact or fiction for $100. The international language based on words from the chief European languages, is called Esperanto. Is that fact or is that fiction? Okay. Fact. It is fact for $100. You now have $300. Clearly in the lead. Do you want to take a chance? Yes, we'll take a chance. You will okay. take a chance. All right, with $300, let's see what's behind it. Duck $20. Brings you back to $280. So the score at the end of this round, $280 to $170. Judy and Felix, spin that wheel. Animals for $100. Animals for $100. Born Free was a hit book, movie, and song. Feline family. <laughs> what kind of animal was its star, Elsa? A lion. A lion is correct for $100. You now have... $270. You're behind by $10. Do you want to take a chance? Mm, no. Yes. It's up to you. Mm, yes. You will take a chance, all right? With your $270, let's see what's behind the take a chance window. Deduct $100. Brings you back to $170. Denise and Jim spin the wheel. The Old West? For $30, the Old West for $30. In 1848, James Marshall discovered gold in California. In which of the following places were those first nuggets found? Donner's Pass, Sutter's Mill, or Fort Fremont? Okay. Sutter's Mill. Sutter's Mill is correct for $30. That brings your score to $310. You want to take a chance? Yeah, why not? All right. You're ahead. Let's take a look at the take a chance window. Add fifty dollars. So at the end of this round, the score is three hundred and sixty dollars to two hundred and seventy dollars. And as you hear, our buzzer caught us. So we'll play two more complete rounds, and the team that has accumulated the most money at the end of this these two rounds will be our winner of the honeymoon game. All right? Okay. Judy and Felix, spin the wheel. Animals for thirty dollars. Animals for thirty dollars. Which of these two animals? is the fastest, the African cheetah or the racing greyhound? Cheetah's the fastest animal there is. Okay. The cheetah. Right for $30. All right. You now have $200. You want to take a chance? You have to take a chance. All right. 
with your $200. Let's see what's behind our Take a Chance window. Deduct $50. I'm sorry. $150 you have now. Denise and Jim, spin the wheel. Sports for $30. Sports for $30. The only horse to win the Kentucky Derby and then be disqualified was Dancer's Image in 1968. Is that true or is that false? Okay. False? No, I'm sorry, it's oh. true. We deduct $30, which now brings our score to 330 to 150. This is the last round. This is your last opportunity to catch up, Judy and Felix, so good luck to you. Spin the wheel. Your category is Woman's World. Woman's World for $30. How many tablespoons are there in a cup? Are there 10, 12, or 16? Take it, you have a woman. 10, 12, or 16? Not anymore. Uh, I'll say 16. 16 is right for $30. That's your reprieve. You have $180. Behind the Take a Chance window is your fortune. OK, we'll take, we'll take it. it. All right, let's see what's behind our Take a Chance window. Add $40. Our winners are Denise and Jim with a clear cut victory of $330. Congratulations. Oh, that's marvelous. Congratulations to you. I'm sorry, Felix and Judy. You have a nice consolation prize for you backstage. You were wonderful competitors. You have won. We'll be back to see what prizes you win and where you're going to spend your exciting honeymoon right after this important message. <laughs> Welcome back to the Honeymoon Game. Here beside me is our winning team on the Honeymoon Game. And players, you've won $330 in cash. Now I'm going to give you a chance to win some lovely prizes. Our three spinning wheels that you've been involved with now contain a wide assortment of prizes. Some valuable, some not so valuable. You can spin the wheel three times. If you like what you see on the first spin, you can have those prizes. If not, you have to give them up and take a second spin. If you like what you see on the second spin, take those prizes. If not, you give those up, kiss those goodbye, and take your third and final spin. But this time, you must keep whatever prizes are showing on the wheels the third time. All set? Okay. All right, spin the wheels. Round and round and where they go. A stereo system, beauty products, and snuff. <laughs> so you've got a stereo system, you've got beauty products, and some snuff. You want that? One more. One more. All right. One more. You get a bassinet, sausages, and assortment of clocks. <laughs> we'll go again. What's that? We'll go again. You'll go again. All right. This is your third and final spin. Whatever comes up on those three wheels this time, you must keep. Good luck and spin. Tandem bike, a sailboat, and a hot dog. So you win a tandem bike and a sailboat. Congratulations to you. Here's Harry Blackstone Jr. to describe the prizes you just won. From Columbia, the popular twosome tandem for physical fitness and double fun in the sun featuring coaster brakes, white sidewall tires, chrome fenders, and all deluxe extras from Columbia, America's oldest bicycle maker since 1877. And from Snark Products, this 11-foot sunflower sailboat with a hull tougher than fiberglass, lightweight, unsinkable, holds two adults or four children in compliant, complete safety, has 45 square feet of sail, needs no maintenance, and stores easily. The Sunflower by Snark Products. Thank you, Harry. All right, Denise and Jim, you have the sailboat, the bicycle, $330, and the hot dog. And now, for the final moment of our program, we're going to learn where you're going to go on your honeymoon when you get married. Now, behind our hidden windows now are three distinct honeymoon trips. They vary considerably in elegance and in luxury. You'll have to decide between you whether you want to select the honeymoon trip which is now hidden behind window number one, the honeymoon trip that's hidden behind window number two, or the honeymoon trip that's behind window number three. Since this is an important decision, I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. Too big an average. 10 seconds. Like two, three, two, three. Either two, three, not one. Two, three. 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 Two, three.
Window number one, window number two, or window number three? And I have to call for your answer. Okay. Okay, three. Number three is the honeymoon trip you've chosen. Let's find out where you're not going. <laughs> All right? You've chosen window number three. Let's see where you would have gone had you chosen window number one. To Las Vegas. Fabulous trip to Las Vegas. Oh, let's try window number two. Hawaii. All right, you're not going to Hawaii. You're not going to Las Vegas. Let's find out where you are going as we reveal window number three. A fabulous, glorious, all-expense vacation in Acapulco. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you'll enjoy a week's vacation at the El Presidente on Acapulco Bay. An experience you'll treasure the rest of your life. The ideal combination of elegant and graceful living with all the pleasures, sights, and sounds of a tropical paradise. El Presidente in Acapulco, another flagship hotel. Congratulations to you. Thank you. We'll be back to wish our winning couple Bon Boise right after this message. Welcome back to the honeymoon game, and let's hear another round of applause for our winning couple, Denise and Jeff. They'll be spending that fabulous vacation in Acapulco. You said that uh, when Hawaii came up, that your heart sank just a little bit. Have you spent some time in Hawaii? That's where we met. You met in Hawaii? You spend your honeymoon on a tandem bicycle in Acapulco, <laughs> right? You're going to take the hot dog along with you? Right. right. The sailboat should come in handy. You're a sailing enthusiast. I yes. noticed that you're a right. skin diver. Right. So you go out. Good luck to both of you. We Thank really you very much. We enjoyed having you with us, and you were a marvelous couple, and we hope that every day for the rest of your life will be a honeymoon. Thank you. Thank you. Wish we could afford to let you stay all of them in Acapulco. Okay, okay. You have a tandem bike, $330 in cash, which ought to go along. The trip to Acapulco and the hot dog. Good luck. We hope that you'll take some snapshots and send it back so we can let our home audience who have rooted you on so strongly we'll see how you made out, okay? We'll right. Very good. Thank you. Hope to see you again next week here on the Honeymoon Game. Till then, this is Jim McCrell saying goodbye. <laughs> This was a Jack Berry four-star international production in association with Metromedia Television.